Germany required a way to counteract Allied bombing in 1944, and a lack of fighter firepower led to the development of the Bach MB A349 Nata, a piloted rocket interceptor. Before ejecting, the interceptor was released vertically, with the pilot directing it onto opposing bombers. The plane was dangerous and it was termed a German kamikaze. Built in small factories by untrained labourers, the plane never saw combat since the war ended before it could be completed. The remaining prototypes serve as a reminder of German engineers' recklessness and desperation in the last days of World War II. Countries had few alternatives for defending against aircraft bombing formations during World War II. Since 1937, the Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet was an experimental German rocket-powered fighter. However, production could not be rapidly ramped up and guiding systems were untrustworthy. Germany was particularly pressured because it lacked an adequate strategy to defend its cities from incessant Allied bombing. The Luftwaffe opted in 1943 to equip missiles with a pilot for the terminal approach phase, resulting in the emergency fighter program. The Luftwaffe was looking for designs for a basic interceptor constructed from common materials like wood, glue and nails and it needed untrained employees and subterranean factories. The plane was supposed to take off vertically, however. The design allowed for a horizontal departure on a tricycle-wheeled trolley. Yonkers, Hinkel, Batcham and Messerschmitt submitted proposals. The Henkel P-1077 Julia, a single-seat interceptor with a pilot in prone position, was chosen as the preferable design. The prototype, however, was destroyed during an Allied attack on Vienna in 1944. The Bashem BA-349, a human-guided missile, was the backup option. Werner von Braun, a German aerospace engineer, first envisioned a vertically launched rocket interceptor to strike enemy before returning to land in 1940. Despite being rejected by the Luftwaffe Ministry of Aviation, the concept piqued the interest of German engineer Eric Buckham, who was working on a rocket launch aircraft capable of reaching high altitudes faster than previous fighters. The Fieseler Fi-166 was designed to fight Allied bombers before returning to base, propelled by two UMO-04 jet engines. This design, however, was never developed into a prototype. Buckham founded his own firm, Buckham Work GmbH, in 1944 to build a revolutionary rocket interceptor. He produced spare components for fighter aircraft manufacturers, inspired by the FI-166 Buck. The BP-20 was constructed entirely of wooden panels with a bulletproof glass windscreen, simple lacquered timber wings and all control surfaces located in the tail. Because of its low cost, former furniture workers were able to build it in bare and concealed facilities, making it a feasible choice for fighter aircraft producers. Bachem, a German rocket scientist, first ignored the Air Ministry's technical section. He was, however, connected to Heinrich Himmler, the SS leader, and he ordered 150 BP-20s. Himmler was so taken with the idea that he requested another 50 from the Luftwaffe Ministry of Aviation, According to Michael Neufeld, a senior curator at the National Air and Space Museum, the SS under Himmler thought they were the authentic representative of National Socialism and supported a variety of initiatives. Bachem's Natter German prototype, propelled by a Volta engine, would launch vertically from a scaffold structure. The Natter, a low-cost interceptor, was meant to fly at 20,000 to 30,000 feet in altitude. During the 10-second launch phase, it was equipped with four extra fuel boosters to produce 10,600 pounds of thrust. The interceptor would launch 19 to 28 missiles from a rocket pod on the nose of the aircraft, after which the pilot would detach the nose piece and escape by parachute. The cockpit would come down using a separate parachute. The low-cost interceptor would fall into the ground once the bombers were destroyed and the pilot fled. Bachem put pilot safety first and rejected the concept of providing the Natter a solid nose in the event of a bomber crash. Despite efforts to make the pilot safe, 
the Interceptor has earned the nickname German Kamikaze because to its dismal safety record. Hans Kammler oversaw the Natter's development at the Waffen SS workshop. On October 4, 1944, the first prototype was constructed and tested at a height of 3,000 meters. The first four towed flights were piloted by Eric Kirschner. Pilot Hans Dubard performed a free flight blood test and concluded that the Natter was a capable flying vehicle. Unmanned launch tests, on the other hand, were a fiasco with the interceptor becoming caught in a launch tower due to its wood construction and flying off track for three months before crashing and burning. In February 1945, Berlin officials put pressure on Beckham to execute a human launch test flight that was not truly ready. Batcham chose to attach a human inside the cockpit and launch the M23. Prototype. After the original pilot returned, Luthor Seber, a Dresden native, was assigned to the test flight. Zeber had been downgraded to corporal after drinking on duty, and he had carried out dangerous covert operations on the Eastern Front, earning him the Iron Cross. Keber voiced confidence in the mission a day before the test. The man made a will, giving everything to his fiancée. Before the test, the development team had to wait for the fog to clear. Willie Fiedler, development head, informed the pilot about the launch process, advising him not to turn upside down after liftoff. Zeber and Eric Batcham shook hands, and the pilot consoled the engineer by stating he regarded the gadget testing as a self-imposed duty and was confident in its accomplishment. The pilot expressed confidence that the test would be successful. The M23 launched upright, with four boosters detaching as anticipated, However, at 350 feet, the canopy separated, probably owing to gases from the combustion chamber. Even from afar, the Backham squad saw the M23 crash steeply into the ground. Tseber was promoted to his previous position after the accident. Germany surrendered two months after Tseber's burial, and only 36 of the 200 natters ordered were actually produced. Following three human crewed test flights following the M23 disaster, the interceptor was deemed reliable and suitable for operational assessment. Due to a lack of cement blocks for grounding missiles, a few unpiloted tests were undertaken. Six natters were destroyed by Batcham personnel to prevent Allied soldiers from taking them. In May 1945, four Natters were recovered by US forces and sent to the Smithsonian Institution and the Deutsches Museum in Munich. The Natter is a symbol of German engineers and elite's imprudent eagerness to design weapons that appeared better but were crude and based on half-baked concepts.